All right, going to be a quick one. So we just had a close on Tuesday. And tomorrow, Powell spoke. Tomorrow is CPI day. So that's pretty much the most important day. Didn't trade today, but um, we could do just a quick daily overview. So uh, company portfolio, we know it's doing terrible. I don't need to sugarcoat it. I mean, as long as crypto is up, we're doing pretty bad. Uh, it looks like we could take a look at it really quick. Yeah, it's it's um, it's put in new highs, so it's it's really threatening as far as like uh, how far it's going. Big squeeze, and then <laughs> we're gonna find out what's gonna happen. So that portfolio on the company portfolio is pretty beat up, and then uh, but yeah, you know, we're just gonna put our he head in the sand. We're just going to wait and see what, what's going to happen with the CPI release, uh, how bad it's going to get. We don't know. Uh, we, we can only just wait to the end of the week. Uh, I mean, that, that's kind of just it. Got to wait to the end of the week. We're, right now, we're in the bull trap phase. Wherever that is, S&P 500, we're in the bull trap. Everything, we're in the bull trap uh, until we reach the other side of it. And so, Price likes to go in these no man lands and then... Just really surprise people. So, <clears throat> S&P 500 close on the day, getting close to our rejection zone or just the point of interest. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen. I just know what I'm planning to do, right? And as far as uh, we're waiting for an H4 breaker to the downside, haven't gotten it yet. Uh, as far as uh, we're going into the rejection zone. Uh, not going to trade it, maybe not even trade it at all yet tomorrow, until, until we get an H4 breaker. Uh, oil, uh, rejecting off yesterday's resistance, uh, possible swing failure pattern here, who knows. <clears throat> Next would be high yield, high yield credit spreads, uh, credit spreads. We're at weekly resistance right now. Um, lots of gaps. Gap on the week. Gap on the day. Uh, looking really inefficient. Uh, LQDH. Sh straight up into weekly resistance. Uh, gapped up uh, on the day. Uh, closed above. Resistance turned into support. Hasn't retested it yet to test if it's strong support. So we're just kind of waiting to hear back on that. And then uh, next comes like the currency. Japanese yen in the no man's land. Uh, retesting weekly support. Uh, we we got to wait and see if we reclaim back this uh, su uh, daily support. Or if we just continue on down. Who knows. And then the euro. Euro is uh, definitely telegraphing. Us going higher. Uh, who knows how successful that will be? Uh, probably will be influenced a lot by what's coming. Um, as far as UVXY, definitely made a new low. Uh, drip, uh, doing okay, just holding even keel. And then SRS, which is the other one we uh, we bought into. On the day we thought this uh, break above resistance was uh, a nice breakout. Turns out it was a nice fake out, uh, but we're at so daily weekly support, so we're, uh, not a huge difference. But uh, we thought we had some momentum. All in all, uh, we're waiting until the finish of tomorrow. Like uh, we we pull up the William so the Huntington Timing Solutions. Uh, we're at a huge inflection point of possible reversal. If we look at the Williams Money Flow Index, institutions are positioned short, but that doesn't mean we could wake up or we could have a nice squeeze for you know intraday. So we got to be really cautious when approaching this, and we got to allow it the market to process it. So you know that's kind of just what I'm thinking. Going into tomorrow, it's just pretty much a time to enjoy yourself and uh, not really uh, 
pay attention to what's going on. Like I didn't even pay attention to the news and what's going on with what Paul said. Basically, what Paul said is uh, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. If anything, he's just going to uh, get what he wants out of it, and uh, not only, not always is it really consequential. Like uh, you know, me not paying attention to what he's saying is showing just how how important what he says is you know it's not that important uh i just pay attention to what price does and then we do a risk to reward uh probability uh play and that's what matters is because that's the game you know the reason why people are buy and hold investors to by default is because of risk to reward and we never leave the game of risk to reward that is the game and we need to do what is the best risk to reward and the best risk to reward is based upon the probability of upside downside so as far as like risk to reward goes we're not in the best risk to reward yet uh, you know, it, it it comes with the um, market structure break of the bulls capitulating and we already took our first 15 minute market structure break short here and it worked out really well um, and we might get another one uh, something like this but you know we need to let it play out it didn't break down to the downside yet and we want it to break down near like New York London open no, New York uh, New York London closed New York open so until we see something like that we're not gonna budge a finger so that's pretty much it uh, we are still expecting some downside uh, we just haven't gotten it yet and um, you know, nothing's changed other than the game that we're aware. We're aware we need to wait. And we're aware of what the cycle forecast, the decennial, the four-year, and the Q-Spectrum 2 is saying. We're aware of the, what the money flow index is saying, and what, the way institutions are positioned. Uh, we're aware of just um, you know, our fast and slow signals of the risk to reward. We know we're aware we're in a bull trap right now. Um, and we're waiting for, uh, we got, we're in, involved in a nested breaker, so we need to go a lot slower. Um, you know, we're in the bull trap, um, whether it be the weekly 40 moving average channel or the daily, uh, I think that's 40 moving average channel. You know, we're, we're straight up in the bull trap until we close the week above like 40, 61, spot 65. We're not out of the bull trap. We're, we're literally in the bull trap. And until it escapes it, it's it's still a bull trap. And then as far as like a really good, you know, confirmation of the downside, uh, going below the, closing the week below the yearly open is definitely a huge signal for me. You know, that, that yearly open, if it's not defended, is, uh, is a big deal. And we could see it on the quarterly and... Um, you know, if we were to apply supply and demand uh, rules to <clears throat> the quarter, uh, the you know, the resistance, so it's it's the up candle before the downswing. So basically, we would assume a reclaim of 38, 38 spot seven is where all the bears are hidden. If we get back below there, it's capitulation, and we're waiting for that. We're waiting for it to get back below. It could go this full range of up to this uh, last quarter high, which is basically like a double top if we were to go there. But until it gets exhausted, we have to wait. So that's pretty much it. That's um, what I'm thinking. Uh, that's what I'm thinking what would invalidate the bears. Uh, that's what I'm thinking what would in, uh, give a green light for the bulls uh, until and then I also that's what I think for an, a good entry to the downside a nice reclaim a daily close below the uh, below 38 38 spot 7 or below the uh, yearly open um, so that's it thanks for watching